Kilgore coming to you from Trident. We're all the way up here outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And I've had a lot of people that have asked me about, you know, what's the easiest way to mix some of these sealers together, right? And it's kind of confusing, but we're gonna kind of give you the cheat code. This is gonna make it a little bit easier for you to understand how to mix Cat5. Cat5 is a two-part urethane sealer. It's used for enhancement, joint stabilization, and a semi-gloss to a high-gloss sheen. So the Cat5 comes with two gallons of hardener and five gallons of part A. So we call this part A and we call this part B, right? So on top of this, I'm gonna show you, come on up here and take a look, is a lot number. This lot number that's on the top here, it's a really, really good idea for you to write that down on the jobs that you do. It's real simple. Just write it down on the top of the paperwork or something like that. Because if something were to go wrong and we weren't able to figure out what that is, we could look up that lot number and find out exactly the chemical composition, how it was made, how it was put together. And by doing so, we can eliminate the option that the sealer may have been the problem. Okay, or it could have been. But I can tell you with Trident, the sealers that we make, we will not release a sealer unless it has less than a 3% failure rate. In the past years that we've put, put it, putting that together, we have had zero products that have had a failure rate that have been put together because it's made exactly the same every single time. So on the top of this, you have the lot number that's right there. That gives us the information we need to be able to look that up. Now, with this, you're gonna notice that on the side of these buckets here are measuring pieces on the side. Now, I will tell you that a human puts these on. Not always do they line up exactly where they're supposed to go. It's a really good idea to get you one of these buckets that has the measurements that have been laser measured onto here that show the gallons as well as the liters that are onto it, okay? I have set up four buckets in here because the Cat5 makes up to 20 gallons of sealer. That 20 gallons of sealer, you can make 20 gallons. That's considered the D2 mix ratio. You can also mix 15 gallons. That's the D1. It's higher concentration. It's less diluted. So it's going to give you a deeper enhancement, harder joint stabilization, as well as a, um, as a higher sheen and shine to it. That's the difference between a D2 and a D1. Now, on the Cat5, part B that's here, on the back is all of the mixing dilutions that are here for D1 and D2. So you can go into here, look how many square feet that you've got. It will tell you how many uh, parts of part, how much part A, how much part B, how much water to add to it, and it'll tell you how much that you're gonna have at the end. You can also do it in reverse. If you know that you need five gallons, you're gonna come back to it. If a D2, it's gonna say you add five quarts, which is 1.25 gallons or a half a gallon, and then the rest of it in water up to five gallons, and that's gonna give you five gallons of sealer. So on top of this, there's a couple of ways of being able to open up this part A, or I'm sorry, the part B. There is um, the clips in the top, but if you also want to open it up really, really quickly and dump it out, you can grab one of those pineapple openers um, that your grandma had, and she would pop open the can with it and make the big triangle on top. You can just flap that bad belly over and just give it a pop and give it another pop right here, and you pour it right out and you're ready to go. If you're not going to use all of it at that point, you can also pick up a gallon lid. They have them at different stores. It's a plastic lid. They're about 95 cents each, and you can just snap that right onto the top and save it that way. Get used to do that. But on this bucket right here, there's actually these little tabs, all right? These little tabs are in place so that they hold the lid into place during shipping. Now, when this, buck, when this can is made, it's, um, it's actually nitrogen that we use to seal these down so that there's no air that gets inside of it. So you have to crack it. Now, these part, these little clips that are right here, all you do is, and a five in one tool is gonna to be your best friend. No doubt about it, because I can use this little point right here and I can just slip it right up underneath the bottom here and pull those right off. Real simple. Right up underneath and pop that off. Now, when you open this, a lot of people will use can openers or paint can openers, and they want to pry it down. 
when you pick up paint, you get it, for instance, from Sherwin-Williams, they've already cracked that seal to add the tint into it to make it the color that they're looking for. So it's very easy just to pop it open at that point, unless you've got a bunch of paint that's sitting around the outside. But because these are sealed, it's going to have more of a suction holding it together. So the trick to opening up these Part A's is not to open it this way. It's to open it this way. Okay, so if I go like this, I could take that lid that's around the top of it right here and it will straighten up to the top. And if you do that all around, you ain't getting that lid off. It's gonna be really tough getting that lid off. But if I go into it and crack it this direction, it should very easily go right around and see how I'm going down. I exaggerated how far you had to go down, but right here, all the way around and then open it up and you'll see here now what i want to show you is did you see how bubbled that is see how there's like different levels and i don't know if you can see that in that camera or not what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay this down like this and over a short bit of time it's going to be smooth as glass and that's the levelers that are inside of it that levels everything out and that's the high grade aliphatic urethane the level 9 urethane that we talk about in here that is unlike any other urethanes that are out there in the market today. Now, what I want to show you is how absolutely clear this stuff is. A couple little bubbles there on top. But as you can see, it's almost invisible. You can barely see anything, right? See that? Right. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. Now the difference between an aliphatic urethane and an aromatic urethane is, is that an aromatic urethane are pretty cheap to use. They produce a high sheen and a high shine, but they don't have UV protection inside of it. They also um, can add some of the other things like levelers inside of it, defoamers. These are all very, very important when it comes down to a sealer. So having those things in place, when you don't have a leveler, then you gotta level that thing out, all right? Also, a defoamer, the foamer and the defoamers inside of it, they are, take the micro bubbles and get those out. If you have a bunch of bubbles that are inside that sealer, and then you put it down, it's almost like putting peanut brittle on top of it. So you've got all these microscopic things into it. It's the details that matter. That's why we go into all these details, why we spent so much time together putting this, putting this thing together with all the details, even though you're not gonna teach it, but you gotta understand why, right? An aromatic urethane typically has a sweet smell to it. I'm sorry, yes, an aromatic urethane. It'll do a high sheen and a high shine, but it won't hold on to the color very long because the UV, they don't have UV protection inside of it. So if I went around this class today and I said, you know, I could look at you and look at you and you and you and say, all right, are you, you know, you could be wearing SPF 10, you could be wearing SPF 20, you could be wearing SPF 50, and you could be wearing SPF 75. I wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at you, right? But you're going to have the most protection. <laughs> now, you're wearing that white block on your nose right there, so we're going to know that you're 100% block that's on that. But the UV protection is what breaks down the sealer the quickest, so you have to have a good sunscreen inside of it. And aliphatic urethanes, you can add a really good sunscreen to it. And we have a very, very strong, and that's why we're getting the, the longevity and durability out of it, right? Now you can also tell that it's an aromatic urethane because typically the can is lined. When it's all lined inside, that's so that it can protect it against the aromatic urethane. So be careful when you're looking at other sealers that are out in the marketplace there. And even if you talk to a salesperson, Look at the SDS sheet. Look at these different things and find out, are they using an aromatic urethane or an aliphatic? And what you want is an aliphatic urethane. It's also the most forgiving that you can use. So if I were to, this is how the mixing all comes together, right? I've got two gallons of part B. Let me say this. If you're going to lose something in this system, Who's the part A? Not the part B's. That's the most expensive part of the whole system. <laughs> right? I really don't want you to lose any of them. 
but look at that, you know, that's the part that if you're going to have an issue, make sure you lose those, not or lose these, not those, right? So if I've got five gallons, this is test time, right? If I've got five gallons and I can make 20 gallons, that means that if I wanted to make one bucket, I'm going to need one fourth of everything. I know your head's hurting, right? But I want you to think, what is one fourth of five gallons? I know the answer. 1.25 gallons, right? If I have two gallons of part B and I want one fourth of two gallons, how much is it? A half a gallon because there's four halves in two gallons. So if I want to make five gallons of sealant, which is one fourth of 20 of a D2 mix ratio, I'm going to add 1.25 gallons of part A, a half of a gallon of part B, I'm going to mix it for one minute, and then I'm going to fill it the rest of the way up to the five gallon mark, mix again for a minute, and voila, I got five gallons of sealant. See how easy that is? If I wanted to make 10 gallons at the exact same time, I'll put two and a half gallons inside of this bucket. I'll put one gallon inside here. I'll mix it. I'll equally distribute it across the two that are here. Fill it back up with, to mix it. This has already been mixed here. Fill it up here to the five gallon mark mix it again, I got 10 gallons of sealer. If I want to make all 20 of them at the same time, I'm going to take 20 gallons, or I'm going to take 2.5 gallons, put it inside this pail, I'll have two and a half gallons left in here, and um, then I'm going to put one gallon in here, one gallon in here, mix them, equally distributed across all four of them, add water up to the five gallon mark, mix them again, and now I got 20 gallons of sealer. It's that easy. Now let's say, for instance, I wanted to make D1. There's only one change. Only one change, and it's real simple. I still can put the 1.25 1, the 1 gallons inside here, and the half gallon, and mix it. The only difference is, I'm not going to fill the water up to the 5 gallon. I'm just going to double what I have, which is 1.75. I had 1.25 gallons of part A, half a gallon of part B. That's 1.75. I'm gonna add 1.75 gallons of water to it, mix it again, and now I have a D1 mixture. Okay? Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. Grab this piece down here, pull it off. Now. I'm going to show you the wrong way to pour a bucket, and then I'm going to show you the right way. The wrong way to pour a bucket is to grab it, pour it like this. What you're going to see is it starts to block, it starts to do all this, bloop, 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 right? Even with my sound effects. But if we turn it around and I grab it this way, pour it off the top, it doesn't do it anymore, okay? I'm going to add this up to 1.25, which is also 5 liters. We are at a slant, but if I level it out there, I should be right at 1.25 gallons. It's five liters. Okay? Then I can set this off to the side. And then I'm going to pour a half a gallon. Now, around this, over on this side, is a blue line. That blue line is at the half gallon mark. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll take it. Wherever it's at. There it is. Put my hands right here. And after doing this for so long, I can actually hear when a half gallon goes into it, right? So we'll see how good I am, right? Or maybe I am, I don't know. So I'm going to take it.
That's a little off that time. There we go. There it is. So now you can see there's roughly a half gallon left inside there. Okay. So I'll set this off on the side. Grab my drill, my mixer. So I got a drill, paint mixer, put it inside. We're gonna mix it for about a minute. You can come up here and take a look. What you'll notice is, is there's a little bit of butter, right? A little bit of, of bubbles, right? But they're quickly dissipating. And that's because of the defomers that are inside of it. And a lot of the other sealers, if you did it and you tried to blend it this fast, it'd be foaming up all over the place, right? So the defomers that are down inside here are keeping those bubbles from happening. So I'm gonna mix it, mix it for roughly about a minute. Once I get done with that, another thing is I always have a bucket full of water that's sitting over here. So as soon as I get done mixing it, I'll put this into the water and just give it a little blend, right? Now, I don't have sealer sitting over the top of that thing and after a long period of time, it, I see all these guys and it's just built up with sealer and tons of sealer sitting on top of it. But just giving her a little spin like that, it's gonna stay nice and, nice and clean, okay? So then I'll stick this inside here. Oops, sorry. I'm going to pour the water in and I'm going to take the water that we brought down for this and I'm basically going to pour this in to the five gallon water. Because it's slanted, I just had a hard time seeing that number there. There we go. Right there. And then I'm going to mix it again for one more minute. So I'll mix it. See it mixing? There's no bubble. But what you are seeing is the hurricane. Let's see if we can get it here. Here it comes. See the hurricane? That's not how it's got its name. All right? So I'm going to mix it for about a minute. And you can see I'm I'm mixing this pretty aggressively. Like I'm fully down here and I'm mixing it very aggressively and I'm getting no foaming whatsoever. Just a little couple beats, but they're gone, like in a couple seconds. And now I got five gallons of sealer. As long as part A and part B, I can put the lid right back down on top of this, right? You see how level that's gotten now? Um, down here, it's starting to kind of spread out, but that's because of it spreading out. But you can see it's gotten very level that's on that. But as long as I put the lid back on it and put the lid back on here, I can keep this for a long period of time as long as A and B doesn't mix together. It is very important that you mix A and B together first and then add the water and then mix it again. A and B goes through a chemical reaction with each other. There's things in A that are looking for things in part B and there's things in part B that are looking for things in part A. So if you just go A, B, and water, it's not allowing that chemical reaction and then diluting it. So make sure you mix A and B together first, mix it, add your water, and then mix it again, okay? If I were going to make the 10 gallons, just do the exact same thing. Now, if I wanted to do less, I could do less. It's on the chart that's on the back there, okay? And it'll tell you exactly how many part A's and how much part A and part B. So that's how we mix the sealer of Cat 5. You have the Cat, the, the D1, and you have the D2. Most commonly used is D2. And that's how we mix up a five gallon pail of sealer there. So if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call. I'm Mike Kilgore with Trident. Phone number is 1-866-951-4293. Thanks for watching.